opinions expressed on the Custody Queen show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal, professional legal advice. The persons discussed are fictional and not based on actual clients. Thought it was love, had kids in between. You can count on us with the custody queens. Yeah, you can count on us with the custody queens. Welcome, everyone. I am Kristen Holstrom, and I'm here with Sam McBride, my fellow custody queen. And today we have Sandra Ruiz from FixYourCreditConsulting.com. But, you know, before we get to all of that stuff, we've got to make Sandra feel welcome and kind of break the ice a little bit. So, Sam, why don't you why don't you break the ice? All right. So, first of all, welcome and thank you for being here, Sandra. Thank you for having me. Happy Saturday. Kristen's going to get mad at me because I say that every time. Um, so, I think we should play a little true or false. All right. Are you game? Let's okay. go. All right, I'm gonna ask Sandra the first question. The unicorn is the national animal of Scotland. True or false? <laughs> false. It's true. Really? Yeah, I, and I said str- false too. Yeah, I struggle with this one, so I'm wondering, are there actually unicorns in Scotland? I don't know. I think we should go and take Custody Queens on the air. I think that's a great idea. (laughs) Because I I love unicorns. And it's funny because my daughter's getting to the age where I still buy everything unicorn for her. And she's like, Mom, I'm kind of growing out of unicorns. That is and I'm like, no, you're still into unicorns and the bows. I'm not I'm not ready for this next phase. I want to go to Scotland. I would love to go. Like there. a Scotland Ireland trip? Yeah, and we could just take custody queens on the on the road. But I, I would have guessed false too, Sandra. So Yeah. Uh, Alright, let's let's give you let's let's give you a chance to redeem yourself here. I don't even know that I would know this one. Cardi B's real name is Cardigan Backyardigan. Oh, definitely false. You got that one right. I was like, you had me a card again, but the backyard again, I don't know. So that was her meme. Her real name is Belcalis Marlenis Almanzar. I like Cardi B better. Yeah, I, I, I do too. And I probably butchered that saying it a little bit. But uh, yeah, I like Cardi B. It's very catchy. Very catchy. So all right, we got we got one more for you, Sandra. And Sam, I'm going to give this one to you too. You know? How many times have you guys gotten a goldfish at like one of those carnivals and then you take it home and it dies in like two days and then you have to buy a new one so your kid doesn't get sad? Many times. Many times, right? All right, so gold- I had gold. Goldie lasted for a while, okay? I think. Maybe my mom replaced it, but Goldie the goldfish was around. I can tell you Riley got one at like an Oktoberfest thing and I had to run to the store because I overfed it and it was gone in like three to four days. And so oh, I had no. to replace it. Um, but yeah, so goldfish, true or false, have a two-second memory. True. False. Their memories can actually last for months. But I would have guessed true, too, based on, you know, Finding Nemo and all those things where their memory isn't that great. Right. Yeah, I don't know much about goldfish. Yeah, I don't either, but... All right, so we now know. Finding Nemo's not a goldfish, right? No. Okay. But it, <laughs> we're on the same page, right? Sure they're all <laughs> fish. It's a fish. It's a fish. They just redid the ride at Disneyland, the submarine, and it's still got a little bit of Finding Nemo, but they redid the whole underground, you know, and yeah, I have a funny story. I went on that recently for Christmas, and my two year old, you know, had an accident while we were on the submarine. And I was like, oh, Lord, this is not going to go well. But enjoy the ride. It's really cool. I they need to go to it. Disneyland. I feel like I haven't been to Disneyland in 10 years. Oh, it, it truly is the happiest. I'm not even joking. It truly is the happiest place on earth. I think me and you need to go to Disneyland, Kristen. Yeah. I think you I, need to I, take me around. Even my husband says when I walk in, I'm like a different person. Because I'm just like, huh, <laughs> I don't care that people are super close to me. I don't care that people are stepping on my stuff. Like, it's crowded. But there's just something about it, being there with your kids. I don't know. It, it changes me. So. Yeah, it's fun. We just went in December for my daughter's birthday, and she had a, a little fracture in her foot, so she had to get a wheelchair, and we didn't have to wait in any line. I was like, you yeah. got the, you got the, you got the, the in, because you get it, you get like a, they tell yeah, you to pass. come back at a certain time, right? Yeah, no, that it, it's there's something about Disneyland during the holidays that is just mesmerizing. Yeah, they really make it look nice. You and feel like a little decorative. kid again, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. All right, Sandra. Let's get into what you do, who you are, your company. I I know that everybody going through a divorce or a separation or what we deal with, this is a, a 
fixing your credit is a big thing because generally one spouse may be on title, the other spouse isn't. How do you fix your credit if you want to buy something new following the divorce? Um, I, I think this service is very, very important to people going through any sort of family law case, but just in general. I know that about 10 years ago before my husband and I bought our first house, I had to do one because I was, uh, you know, not the best with my credit during college and law school. Right. Yeah. So, we're, and we're not really taught anything about credit in school. It's all usually just learning, you know, as you get older. Um, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I started, you know, doing loans um, for clients, helping them refinance or buy um, homes. And so while I was doing that, I came across a lot of clients who had bad credit. So I wanted to help them. And I talked to my broker. I was like, what can we do? And so he's like, just fix their credit. So he showed me what to do. And I just started doing it for free for my clients. And sure enough, a few months later, their credit scores went up and I was able to help them. And, you know, I just once 08 happened, I got out of the uh, mortgage business and decided just to pursue this full time. And so, you know, we're, you know, been doing this for, like I said, over 20 years. We're the highest rated, most reviewed on Yelp. We have over 200 five-star reviews because wow. we have integrity. Um, I love what I do. I love helping my clients and knowing that they, after we fix our credit, they're able to go buy a home or do whatever it is that they want to do with their credit. You know, whether it's buy a car, rent an apartment, or you know, grow their business. Um, so, you know, basically what we do is we'll assess their credit report. I go through the report, see what's affecting their credit, and then I'll go over it with them to find out if the items are accurate or not. You know, a lot of people can have mistaken identity or um, be a victim of identity theft. And so if there's items that they don't recognize that don't belong to them, then I have another way to fight those items to get them off faster. Um, once I go through the report, I also let them know, okay, here's what else is affecting your credit. Whether it's like having high debt, you know, credit cards, or lates on open accounts, or too many inquiries, I tell them, okay, this is also hurting your credit. You need to pay down these credit cards, get them under like 20 or 30% of the limits. You need to put your accounts on automatic payments, like car loans, mortgages, all of that stuff, because you have to automatically pay that every month. So why wait until you get the bill to pay it? Right. Just set it up automatically. Even credit cards, you should set up automatically if you use them you know, all the time. And that way you don't get hit with a 30 day late because that's how your scores drop by like 80 points when you're late on a car payment, a house payment, a credit card. And that's really harming to your credit and it's hard to fix. Like it's so hard to remove late on open accounts. So I teach them all of this stuff. I teach them how to rebuild their credit, how to manage their credit so that they can get their scores as high as possible. You know, our goal is to help them get it above 700. And so if they do all of the things that I tell them to do, then it's possible, you know, and I also teach them how to build their credit, um, like adding trade lines to their credit can also help quickly increase their scores. You know, if they have like very low um, open accounts, so adding, getting added to like a spouse's or a family member's credit card as an authorized user can quickly increase your credit scores. As long as they pay on time and keep low balances, you can see someone's scores go up by like 100 points just by doing that. And so, yeah, so my goal is to, you know, clean up their credit, get all the bad stuff off their credit. And how we do it is by disputing it. I do all of this stuff on their behalf so they don't have to do anything. Um, so we, you know, dispute those accounts for them. Um, all the like negative accounts could be like collections, late, charge offs, settlements, inquiries, um, all of that stuff. And then I um, also just, you know, encourage them to, you know, rebuild their credit, manage their credit correctly so that it can help get their credit scores up quicker. We usually work with our clients for about six months, um, sometimes longer if it's really bad or if they have a bankruptcy on their credit. Um, otherwise, you know, we see results in as little as 30 days and, um, you know, you can see as quick as like a 50 to 100 point increase in that amount of time. Um, but yeah, you know, our goal is to just remove as much as possible and, you know, teach them how to rebuild it so that they can get their scores up as quickly as possible. Well, it's super important. I can tell you when I graduated law school, I was frivolous with money. You know, you, like you said, they don't, they don't teach you a lot about debt and interest rates and credit reports and how important your credit is. And um, when you know, 2008 happened, you know, my husband and I were struggling financially as well. And I had to hire someone similarly, you know, probably six, seven years ago, uh, who helped me immensely. But it was very important to educate me. I didn't even know what some of the stuff meant. You know, I didn't, 
and I'm sure I had old medical bills or something like that. But I would actually love for you to look at my credit now because I know there's things that I could do different. But it happens so much in our cases, our clients. A lot of times only one spouse is on the title of a car or the house. Or sometimes the spouse doesn't even really have credit because the other spouse you know, controlled the money financially. And I always try, when before we even get to that process of the divorce, I say, hey, I need you to talk to a credit repair. I need you to talk to a mortgage broker. I need you to see what is possible before we spend $10,000 to fight over something that's not even achievable. Yeah, and it's something that comes up quite a bit in Kristen and I's practice because when you're dividing things like a house, someone may need to refinance to qualify to buy someone out, or you, there may be a purchase that's coming down the road now that you've sold the house. So it, it really does come up, and Kristen and I always say this, but we're firm believers in education. Um, you, you touched a little bit on the fact that sometimes people go on their credit report and they don't it's like either identity theft or it's not a charge. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So like when people have common names or they're named after their parent, they can end up with that their parents' information on their credit report or just somebody else's information because they have a similar name. And mm -hmm. how do you even find out that that's happening? So by looking at the... Well, Either they can find out by monitoring their credit, so if they keep like an active credit monitoring account open, um, they can get alerted when something hits their credit, and that way they can see like you know what it is and whether it's valid or not. So that's one way to you know just kind of prevent it. Also, keeping a fraud alert on your credit is another way to protect your credit, so that you can you know prevent getting um, someone else's stuff or someone opening stuff in your name. Um, so you know once we go through the report and they're like, oh I don't recognize that or I don't know what that is then I'll ask them, have you been a victim of identity theft? And they'll tell me yes or no. And then um, we'll go through the addresses on their credit report because they usually list like all like, you know, the addresses um, for the past seven years in their report. If they don't recognize certain addresses, then I w remove those as well because usually that tells me that either somebody opened up a credit card or an account in their name and that's how that address got on their report. Um, so, and also when we go to remove negative accounts from their credit report, removing those old addresses that could be linked to those negative accounts can help get those negative accounts off sooner. So it's important to dispute all of that stuff and get that off the credit report. Okay, so if I have a client or you know myself or, or friends or family that want to use your services, how do we find you? So you can find us at FixYourCreditConsulting.com. You can also look us up on Yelp and just re um, search Fix Your Credit Consulting and we'll come up. Um, I, you know, yeah, that's one of those best ways. If you go to our website, there's a way to also submit your information and then we'll call you back. Um, but also all our, our information's on our website. Okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, I, w I once had a client, this was early in my career, and she was splitting, you know, divorce, her husband and her were getting a divorce and she didn't even know what a credit score was. And I mean, that was crazy to me because I'm like, how do you not know? But her husband had handled everything financially. Like she didn't even have, I don't even know that she had a credit card. She was an authorized user to get gas and groceries. But this was a woman who lived, you know, 40 years and really didn't understand what her credit was. And she, she, her goal was to buy out, you know, the other partner. And I'm thinking, we can't spend any money to achieve that because you know, your credit is non-existent. So we need to build that. But it's very important to be educated in whether you're going through a family law case or just in general, you don't want to spend all this money trying to fight for something that's just not possible based on, on the facts as they are. You always want to educate yourself. What can I do before I can think about you know, buying this person out? I need to fix my credit. I need to make sure that I have the money with the support that I'm getting or the support that I'm paying to be able to even buy out that person. Yeah, absolutely. And Sandra, you talked a little bit. I, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, know a bunch about credit scores and stuff like that. But for those out there that don't, um, you talked about sort of this ratio between debt and allowable expense. Can you explain that? Yes. So your credit scores are made up of like, you know, say 30% of it is your overall debt. Okay. So when it comes to like your credit score, you want to keep your debt as low as possible if you want to have your score as high as possible. So by keeping your balances under 20 to 30% of the limit, that's going to keep your score a lot higher because once you go above that, your score is going to drop and that's going to affect your chances of getting approved or it's going to give you a higher interest rate when you go to buy a car or even getting a home loan. So it's super important to make sure you keep those balances as low as possible. 
and um, that's gonna you know really make a difference in your credit and just like you know I get a lot of clients too that are going through divorce and I tell them you know if you're attached to your spouse's credit card as an authorized user get removed right away because if they default on that credit card you're gonna go down with them it's gonna affect your credit too because you're attached to that credit card so it's always important if they are, you know, an authorized user on anybody's credit card to get removed. And how, how do they get removed? They would, the other person would either have to call the bank and do it. And if um, that other person isn't willing, then they can call and try to do it themselves or send a letter to the creditor or the credit bureaus and ask them to be removed from that account. Yeah, and all of this stuff should be done prior you know, to going and buying the car or buying the house. This is just part of the education process that we, you know, advocate so much for. Before you do something, do you have the tools to even get there? Educate, educate, educate. Yeah, and it's really important too when you think about crafting a judgment or coming to any sort of settlement in the family law area, if you're dividing credit cards and debt, a lot of times um, you may be saying, hey, I'm going to take, you know, half of the debt on this credit card. Well, that could put you in a potentially um, bad area if one spouse defaults on that debt. So you want to really carefully come to these agreements. And that's something Chris and I can help you with so that you understand if debt is being assigned to you, is this debt that I maybe have exposure on because you know, my ex is still an authorized user on the account and he's not making the payment, for example. So it's it's really something to consider. And as Kristen said, we want to make sure that we have a holistic approach to it. Yeah, it, it's really just having a plan, you know, and that's part of the, in, the consult that we do in the intake process is what are your overall goals? Is it, you know, moving out of state? Is it having primary physical custody? Is it, buy, you know, buying that person out of the house? What are your goals and how do we get there? And that is the first step of the consult consultation process and so that way we're not rushing and we're trying to spend all this money to try to achieve something that you have no ability to do based on the facts as they are and so sometimes those are tough questions and tough conversations that we have to have with our clients but immediately there's always people that I recommend right away when you're going through this process one therapist you know we say it every day two would be someone to help repair your credit because everyone needs mostly everybody needs it on some level I can tell you that my credit is is above 700 but I know that it's not super clean as you're saying all these things so I really need to uh to have you work on it for me yeah and um another thing too so what happens if you have a say you have a credit card and say you're above the 30 percent utilization are there other things you can do? Obviously, we want you to pay it down, but are there other things you can do to potentially increase your credit score while you're paying down that debt? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can try to get the limit increase on that credit card or get added to another credit card as an authorized user to help um, kind of build your credit to it offsets the debt because you're adding more available credit. Right, so if you increase your overall line of credit, then you can get yourself within that 30% utilization while you're still paying it down, but without making a huge payment to pay it down because a lot of us maybe can't make that payment, especially if we're going through a divorce at that time or we can't make the payment we would want to make at that time. So there's other options. That's a great tip. I'm actually, you know, a mental note for my brain. You know, I always learn, I always learn so much stuff from the guests we have because you know, being an adult, being a parent, being an attorney, we're always learning. We're always growing. And every time we have a guest, I learn something about myself and I learn something that, you know, I should be doing that I may not be doing. Uh, and so, Sandra, those are really, really great tips. And I would refer all of my clients to reach out to Sandra. You know, do it before you, you want to do whatever it is your goal. Don't wait until the last minute. Plan, plan, plan. If you're thinking about getting a divorce, the next step. I need someone to help with the emotional process. I need someone to help make sure that my credit's where it's at. Can I go buy a new car if my husband takes my car? You know, those are all the things. So it's plan, plan, and it's hiring the right people to make sure that that plan can come to fruition. That is the most important part of this process. Find the right attorney, find the right therapist, find the right credit repair person, and have a plan. Don't you feel so much better when you have a plan when you wake up? You know? Absolutely. I am a routine yeah. person. Well, I, am. I guess I, I feel better when I don't have a plan and it's a Saturday and I have nothing to do. <laughs> I except don't know for what, I be don't on know the radio. Like. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. There's other things they can do too. Like paying, if you pay your rent on time, you can get that added to your credit and get like a 40 point boost. 
Um, Experian offers something called a boost where you can add your utilities to your credit report and that can help, you know, with your Experian a little bit. So those are like some things you can do extra to like build your credit in case and getting opening secured credit cards like for people that have bad credit and they can't get approved for credit cards I always tell them go open a few secured credit cards where you put down a deposit and you get a credit card and it reports on your credit and that's a way to start rebuilding your credit until you can get approved for unsecured credit cards yeah and, and it, it's a process but you have to trust the process and you have to be invested but again so many people wait until you know the day before they want to buy a car and it's like no this this doesn't work like this we have to have a plan and structure you know it's sometimes when you go on vacation for too long and then it's like okay i need to get back to my routine right you know like but i that's what i tell my clients i i it's so important to have the right people in your circle in your life that are going to help you get to the next level of what that looks like and sandra you would be a huge help um to all of our clients and anyone listening because everyone needs help with their credit you just told me so many things that i need to do so you gave me homework but i'm going to call you and have you do it thank you <laughs> i have more questions for you sandra um so for our listeners what's a hard inquiry Okay. Hard inquiry is when you go car shopping and they pull your credit. You get a hard inquiry. When you apply for credit cards, you get a hard inquiry. When you get too many of those, your scores are going to drop a lot. If you're just getting like a one or two, it's just a couple of points. It's not bad. So you want to avoid getting too many inquiries because it's going to affect your credit scores. And um, so when you have bad credit scores and you're trying to get a car, they will run your credit like crazy and you'll end up with like 20 inquiries. At every dealership? Yes. Yeah. Even if you just go to one, they'll run your credit like crazy because they're just trying to find anybody to approve you. And so that's very harming to your credit. So I get a lot of those clients who I can help remove it off of two of the bureaus. The only bureau that won't remove inquiries right now is TransUnion. Okay. I don't know why, but they're just difficult. Um, so that's a hard inquiry. Okay, and so if you have too many of those, your score goes down. Does it stay on for a particular amount of time? Yes, so they fall off after two years if you do nothing. I can get them off in like anywhere from 30 to 60 days. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of this balance, right, between, hey, you want to go get approved for maybe a new credit card or a line of credit versus you want to see how that's going to potentially affect your credit score. So what are things that people can do to maybe avoid getting a hard inquiry? Like if you're going to go buy a car, for example, is there a way to get around that? So they can pull their credit first, like the way they can see where their credit is at and they can let the you know dealership know, okay, this is what my credit score is. There's a site called myfico.com that gives you more accurate FICO scores and it even tells you what your car FICO score is. So I always recommend going there first versus going to like Credit Karma or like another site that just gives you a Vantage score. So that's a good way to get know your FICO car FICO score. Um, and that way you can get ideas to what you would get approved for before you let them run your credit. Because once they get your information, they're going to run it multiple times. They're not going to just run it once. And you can also tell them like, hey, I don't want you running my credit more than once. Yeah, right. that's, hap- that's happened to me when I went to like three different Ford dealerships. They all did it. And I had consequences from that. Yeah. What about going to your bank or going to a credit union to try to get approved for a loan in advance of buying a car? So they, they're going to pull your credit too. Usually they may only pull it once um, because you're probably just going to apply for like one credit card or one loan through them. Um, But just know when you have too many inquiries on your credit report too and you're applying for business loans or business credit card, you can get turned down just for that. So I get a lot of clients that come to me that are like, oh, I'm trying to get, you know, get a business loan or business credit card. I'm getting turned down. Can you remove my inquiries? So we get a lot of clients that need that help. So maybe what I'm hearing is we should call you first yes. before we start messing up our credit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, we're going to add this to, the, to you know, the de- we're definitely going to add this as a resource to our intake process because, again, it's education and teaching our clients how to handle all of this stuff when they're evolving from the separation divorce on to what's next. And we want to make sure that they have all the tools, not just, rep- we don't just represent you at court. We want to give you all of the tools to move and to elevate to that next level. Now, we have an email question that I want to get in just really quick. I know we only have a few minutes left, but this is Robert from Sunland. He emailed the Custy Queens 
And he said, I have a question. I'm in the process of getting divorced. It's not finalized yet. And I found out my ex opened a new credit card in my name and I didn't know. She maxed out the card and hasn't made any payments on it. I found out because I pulled my credit and saw the late payments there. What do I do now? I don't want this on my credit. Can she get in trouble? Thank you, ladies. Well, Robert, thank you for emailing us. Sam, I'm going to let you start and then I'm going to let Sandra jump in. Yeah, so there's a lot of kind of questions within this email, and so I'll, I'll try to answer them as best I can. But, you know, when you're going through a divorce, you have to always kind of revert back to the family law presumptions that we have in the code. So if you are taking out a debt or you're taking out a line of credit and you're doing it post-separation under the family code, it's presumptively your separate debt. So it may be handled from that point of view. Um, if your, your spouse is or soon to be ex-spouse is taking out a line of credit without your authorization, then you need to contact somebody about it because you need to make sure that they're not an authorized user. You probably want to make a police report and you definitely want to deal with it between counsel um, and get it handled in the family law aspect. And just in general, every case is different. The best thing to do is to report it and to talk to your attorney about it, especially if you have an ongoing case. Do you have anything to add to that, Sandra? Yeah, so if I have a client that has that situation, I would definitely have to tell them to call the creditor and have the account closed right away and talk to their attorney or you know their spouse and let them know like, hey, you know, you open this account, you're responsible to pay it. You know, I close the account, but I'm not paying for it. If you don't want to go to jail, <laughs> then take care of that because yeah, what she did was illegal. That's exactly what I would do in that process. It, you know, Robert, you need to talk to your attorney, have them set a letter because this is this is fraud. If if she is opening a credit card in her your name, that that is fraud. And so and it's also those that debt reasonably should be hers if it's handled right through the court process. But I would also immediately reach out to Sandra or a credit repair consulting company that can help you because if she doesn't make those payments for say six months, that's gonna really damage your credit. And so it's and that's why when we do divorces, it's also really hard in the judgment. If if somebody wants to take the debt that's in another person's name and they don't pay it, that's where you need Sandra as well. So you need an attorney who knows what they're doing and also Keep, like I said, keep your circle, have the resources that you need and, you know, trust the process. And ask questions to everyone because what you are going to do or how you're going to assign it in a divorce case is going to be different depending on the family law presumption. Was the debt taken out during during marriage, even if it was in one person's name versus after marriage or after separation, that's going to have a different legal presumption. So make sure you talk about your specific facts of your case. Um, these are all general overviews, so it's, it's going to really be fact specific. So give us a call at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-7772. Sandra, thank you so much for coming on today and teaching us all a little bit about how to improve our lives. Thank you. And everyone listening and watching, uh, we love you. Thank you so much for being part of this process with us. We are all learning and growing together. And, you know, never forget and always remember Let Let love love rule. rule.